That's me. That's me. Jimmy Del Ponte. It's my first year of doing my thing on the air here on cable TV. Seriously, Somerville's the name of my show. And if you missed the first five years, well, now here you go. I've been Ed Norton, Mo Howard, the Scarecrow, a penguin, chickens, rats, and a ball. Lady Gaga, Blanche, pirates, a nun, Bonnie Rubble, Jack Tripper, had fun with it all. I can't believe that they just keep on letting me do more shows. Just acting like a nut and wearing goofy costumes and clothes. Why it ain't? Well, I'll be boy. <laughs> you will, you son of a bee. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. Getting to know. Here's that theme song, Getting to Know You. Hello, everybody. I'm Jimmy Del Ponte, and um, the show is Seriously Somerville. This is the first show of season seven. I can't believe it. I can't believe they still let me do this. It's, I don't know. They got to check things out. I guess they are too busy to know what we're doing down here. But it's a great show, as you know, and we, uh, we always have great guests. But this is a great guest today. Um, I'm proud to have uh, as my first guest of the new season the new chief of police in the city of Somerville, Dave Fallon. David Fallon. Hey, Dave, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm excited. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we got a, we got a few questions. His, his microphone fell off. I know. Perfect. But that's okay. He can put it back on because he's you're a hands-on you guy. Go. 100%. So you see it right there, you know. Uh, anyway, um, was it really uh, necessary to frisk me before we started the show, yeah. Dave? Just for comfortable, I mean, no weapons. Is it my reputation? Yeah. I don't yeah. understand. But it's great. It's great to, um, I know there was a, there was a long uh, process of, of looking for a chief. So that must have been nerve-wracking. Uh, I mean, you say, "Oh, I have a chance to be chief," and oh, wow! So was that? Sure, how'd you yeah. That? Yeah, it was. It was a long process, but I, I tell you, it was an enjoyable process. I learned a lot about myself. Number one, I learned a lot about policing. Yeah. You know, I think I even expanded my knowledge of, of the city. You know? Yeah. I almost really looked at the process as if it was like executive training, and mm -hmm. really training for a position. So I was fortunate to go through it, and I, I enjoyed every step of it. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good to know. Um, so how long have you been on the Somerville Police? Uh, I graduated from the Police Academy in 1998. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah from the Norwood Police Academy. Yeah, so yeah, that's a so, while. Yeah, 16 and years I've been on the job. 16 years. Yeah. Cool. Let's see. Uh, i got to tell you, <laughs> I've been in one of the cells down there. Sure, yeah. i got to tell you, I've been in a cell down at Union Square, but it was only to do one yeah. of these shows. Yeah, good. Don't good. worry, folks. That's a good thing, yeah. I t I'm, I'm with your kids, and it's okay. <laughs> Pass all that stuff. Mm. Yeah, we did a show down there. Now, I got a lot of friends that are cops. I mean, sure. I got, um, let me see. I, I wrote I wrote some of the names. Nicky Stiles. Great guy. Oh, yep. he's retired. He's a yep. great guy. Neil Collins. Fantastic. Uh, Walter Collette. Salt of the Paul Earth. Trent. Yep. I know he's one of your... Yeah, Paul's Paul. now a deputy. Yeah. yeah. Just promoted to deputy chief, which is exciting That's time. awesome. That's great. I just saw Paul. him the other day. Yeah, big sum of a family. Yep. And, uh, you he know, graduated wrote, with my girlfriend. Yeah. Me and Paul walked Davis Square yesterday for about an hour, and I think he knew probably 50 people down there. See, people that's... People and talking to people, and it's so important. That's important. That's like, that's like the old days. Sure. You know, we knew all the cops. You know, like uh, I hung around at Potterhouse Park, and there was a cop up there, Al Matheson. Yep, sure. You know, sure, behind his back, we called him Barney Fife. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he was the greatest guy. Yeah. He knew all the kids. Exactly. And he had to come up there. When, we, when he was coming up there, you know, we, 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 we knew what we had to do. You know, it was, sure. he, didn't, he didn't throw his weight around. You know, he was a good guy. That's important. Um, you know, um, oh, I, <laughs> I got some inside information. I happen to know that my good friend Tim Mitsakis and my other pal, John Howe, Great guys. Two guys with how much more personality could no. you have for a couple yep. of guys? All right, so these this is the, these are the guys that you are going to be sure keeping right. an eye on, right? 100. That's but a full time job in itself. <laughs> John Howe. Just John Howe himself might be a full time job. If you don't know John Howe, he's a, I want to get him on here someday. He he drives the mayor around. He's a great guy. He's a great yeah. guy. But he's a great police officer also. Yeah, 
Yeah. A great police officer. Somerville and, and from a great, great uh, yeah, family. Great family. Starting a young family here in Somerville. Yeah, he just yeah, became John a father. Is, um, That's right. I, when, when I was a lieutenant, John was one of my station men. He's always professional, always respectful of the people. And, and, and what a lot of respect for John myself. Yeah, yeah I, and I, a I, big personality, too. Yeah, I, I, yeah, he's great. And Tim Mitsakis, I used to sell real estate with. Sure. Before wow. he became, and he went, he was serious. I remember he was going to, when he said he was going to be a carpenter, I'm like, really? You're not going to stay in real estate? And, and he, boy, did he go up, huh? Yeah, Timmy's a lieutenant. He's a command. Yeah, actually, Timmy uh, commands a division in the police division. department. A lot of times on the weekend, he's, you know, the de facto acting chief. But when you wow. have somebody like Timmy in that position, believe me, as chief, you rest easy because you know he's yeah. making, he's taking in all the pertinent information. And Timmy, a very good decision maker. Yeah, and I was at yeah. his um, when he became lieutenant. You sure, yeah, I was there. Yep, that's great. I mean, yeah. I have, you know, I have his cell phone number. There you go. That's I've called him many hurt. times if I had a problem and just give, ask him but for advice. Does he but answer the phone for you? Yeah. For me, he doesn't. So really? I yeah. So Timmy. I may call you to call him. He's the chief now. You yeah, can answer no, the phone, no. Tim Mitsakis. Yeah, he's good. Um, yeah, some of the older cops um, we were we were we were friends with. You know, they, in. Um, and and you know that's like it's it's like what's going on today. You know, you, everywhere I go and, and everywhere you know the cops have a lot of the cops, you know they've been in the city for a long time. They know people. They know areas, sure. and that's yeah. really cool. But I gotta I gotta ask you something. Uh, um, there's a few things. There's a few things. If like if I was a cop, sure. I was gonna ask you if you could make me a cop just for one day. Hundred percent. Even if it's just to have a problem at all. All right. Even if it's just to have a. You know how many times I've called the cops. Yep. And like one two one two six two five one sure. two one two and so like line, yep. something's over there. And, oh, who's who's calling? I go, it's Jimmy Del Ponte again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes now they go, Jimmy, what do you, what the heck's wrong sure, now? Yeah. But um, like out in the morning when I'm walking my dog, they fly down College Ave. Yeah, cars, oh my God. vehicles. And a yeah, bus, no. The other day, a bus went down so fast. I was like, and, and I call. And I go, it's my clothes right now. The MBTA thing. Sure. But um, in uh, you know, Davis Square, you know, I. Because I take it seriously. I've, I've been in the yeah. city my whole life. Sure. Yep. You know, and, and you know, but it's really cool because you see a lot of police presence in the city, which is which is nice. Yeah, we're crazy. trying to improve on that. But you bring up a great point, though. You know, if, if when we look at it, my command staff now, me, uh, newly appointed Deputy Chief Steve Carabino, Deputy Chief Paul Trent. We've been talking. I mean, it's really the police in the community that's going to solve problems. It's not the police right, that can right. solve the problem. So it's citizens like yourself that are engaged and are active. If you see something like that, by calling and, and notifying the police of that, yeah. we're looking at that data. So yeah. it might not be your call, right. but it might be two or three calls saying, look, we do see an issue or a trend of speeders on College Ave, yeah. and we'll take actions and steps to, the, to, to, as, to, do, to assess that and, yeah. and, and take care of it. Now, I know, because this is so cool, because in its, you know, I stop at the stop signs because Every time? I stop at the... Mm. Yeah. See, that's the issue. I try. I you really try. try. But there's uh, some that I know. Sure. There's one that's up on um, Potterhouse Boulevard. Sure. The new yep. one you guys just put in. And Tufts comes out. Is that very Curtis important. or yes. Packett? I believe it's Curtis. And that's Curtis. Because Jim Mooney is over there and some yes, of the other guys watching, in the truck. Yeah. Yep. But that's important job. because, ladies and gentlemen, people out there, you have to stop at a stop sign. And you, if there's a crosswalk, you've you got to stop at it. Even though, I mean, it, it bugs me that sometimes people will... And we're working on a PSA now, you know, um, the communications department, about just safety, driving, you know, with a cell phone and walking and biking. Sure. There's yeah. so much going on. Yeah. But you, you can't just walk out into a, into a, some people just want to walk out into a crosswalk and they think that they, they can stop your car. Sure. Because, I mean, you can go to a crosswalk if there's nobody there cautiously, right? Am sure. I right? Yeah, unless there's a stop sign. But some yep. people think that somehow magically... When they walk out, they could just walk out, and, and you, no matter how fast, even if you're going 25 miles an hour, because we know that the speed limit is usually 30, sure. unless, yep. otherwise posted. Yep. So yeah, you're right. Like the, it's got to be the community, it's got to be the people, it's got to be everybody trying to everybody keep, keep everything there, keep, keep everybody safe. I yeah, mean, if you're texting, if you're texting and driving, oh. it's not if you're going to have an accident, it's when you're going to have yes. an accident. And that's why that law is in place. I mean, it's distracted driving, but it's and also eating when you're driving. Eating. Beating, being on your phone when you're driving. I mean. You know, think of yeah, driving like that. Did you know what that? How that bugs me. Yeah, no, come on, you're dangerous. driving, and, yeah. they, and they're like going, yeah, sure. but I'm and you see them there yelling at somebody on the no. phone, and they're driving, and these kids coming home from school. What we try to say to people is, and we try to do a lot of education. You know, it's not only citations that's going to correct bad driving habits. It's also we try to do a lot of ed education, you know, on the roadside and tell them, look at one mistake, 
one accident. Oh, From that point on, there's no going back. No. So don't think in retrospect you're going to look back and say, I won't text and drive. Stop no, the texting no, no, and driving no. now. Your life before the Yeah, before the accident happens. People you know, don't so, really. I see yeah. a lot of people think that, you know, they've been lucky. You know, they think their luck is going to just keep going, yeah. you know, and, and, and but there's yeah. so much. But in general in life, it says, you know, a little bit about society today that, you know, I think it's good for all of us to sit back and really, what's important? Is it important to get to that next meeting and you're rushing all the time and putting yourself under the gun? Yeah. You know, just in general, enjoy life a little bit. The guy right? in the back here that's like right up your butt yeah, when you're no, driving. Yeah. And then I find out that I do that too sometimes. Yeah, because we like, all, yeah, I think it's a, the society we live in today, you know. Trying to, try and trying easy, to relax. Yeah. Everybody got to relax, right? Yeah, yeah. I do yoga relax. to relax. So um, I should oh, try um, You know all these things, Dave, with the, we got a lot of things going on. You got Art Beat, you got, you got Summer Streets, you got the, all this, the, when they close the streets off. Sure, they, yeah. is, there any pro, is there any of a problem with, like, with pickpockets or anything like, like that? No. Is I there a problem in the city? No, no, I don't know. I that think is, when, that's pretty cool. It is, but I think when you talk about Art Beats and Summer Streets, I mean, that that is the city. I have always looked at it from the very beginning of when these... Uh, celebration started that that is the city practicing community policing that's yeah. getting people together getting people out of their homes people interacting with each other knowing your neighbor having the police right. officers present there walking around getting to know your neighborhood police officer and those are great events for the city and it really those events help the police department perform our function for providing public safety absolutely so there'll be more so you the whole thing of having having the police out in the streets. We're working today. I got a meeting today at four o'clock. So We're trying to get more presence on the streets and more presence at these events. And I'll tell you, I feel better. Oh, Jimmy Slattery. I got to yeah, mention Jimmy. Top notch, the, yeah. Leo Martini, my Leo, good friends, yep. Joe McCain. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 George Diversion. Yeah, I, sure. I graduated high school. Oh, you with George. did? Okay, sure. Yeah. Ricky Gilberti. Yep. Great Rich guy. Gilberti. Sure. Yeah. All I mean, good offices. And, and they're still on. You know, they're still they're on. Such they good work, guys. Yeah. You know, I just want to tell you that that uh, you know. I appreciate, and I know everybody out there appreciates what you, what you guys do. And as the new chief, you know, we wish you all the luck in the world. And you know, you, you know, we feel sure. like we're in good hands now. We've met you, yeah, and we good. knew we were in good hands anyway. Yeah. But once you come on the show, sure, then yeah. that's the that's you the guess, uh, yeah. Aberdeen proving ground. There you go. <laughs> on seriously, some of the show with Jimmy Del Ponte. Yeah. But, but um, so I want to thank you for being on the show. And anytime that the communications department can do anything. Let us know any kind of TV shows or anything. Well, yeah, that's we, what we do. PSAs. We appreciate that. And we, we can award-winning PSAs too. We've won some big awards. Joe Constantine, Steve DiCarlo, George Wood, and myself. That's fantastic. We put, yeah. we put a little extra yeah. in it. Like we you know. look at the we look at the communications department as a partner with the police Absolutely. department. Oh yeah, and we need those partnerships. So, but right. I can speak on I think on behalf of myself and all the men and women of the police department. We know we're fortunate to hold the positions that we have and the positions we hold in the community. And we're excited about serving the community. You know, that's a, that's it's huge. It's a very good outlook, and you know, yeah. I think, I think a lot of us in in uh, city service and public service feel the same way. Sure. You know, yeah. we get to work. You know, we, we are gifted. Exactly. And we're lucky, yeah. and we enjoy it because we working, wouldn't do it if we didn't no, enjoy it. We're working in the best city in the country. Yeah, and I, and right. you know that thing about the pickpockets, Dave. Yeah. I'm really sorry. But when you were on the way no, in, the, yeah, I'm thank sorry. you very much. I'm I really need that sorry. Back. Just no money in it, but no them, money but in it, but yeah, I need yeah. it back. Thank you okay. very much. Anyway, Dave Fallon, uh, Somerville Police Chief, thanks for coming on, Jimmy. I appreciate and we'll see your you time. out there in the streets. Thank you, sir. And I if look you ever need help, it. you let me know. All right. Good backup. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'm going to get my flu shot. I get it every year. I think this is the third year that I've got it. I don't want to jinx myself. Knock on wood. I haven't even had a sniffle. A little bit of a sniffle every once in a while, but not, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in my um, early 50s and, you know, so I should really, huh. really uh, get a, I gotta get the shot because of something to do. Let's see, who's in there? It's the mayor's office. That's the mayor's office. I meet him like this. I just want everybody to know there's nothing to this. If you're gonna get a shot, it's nothing to it, and it's, it's important. You should get a shot. So, we're going to do it. Go right here. Left arm. Okay, so anyway. See, look at, we got, can they be on the film? Yeah. All right, see the kids here? See the kids? See that? I'm going to show these kids that there's nothing to it, right? There's not any, we're going to get a flu shot. No big deal. There's nothing, right? All right, we're brave, right? Let me see your muscles. Your muscles. Let me see your muscle. Let me see. Wow, look at the muscle. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to go first to show you it's okay, all right? Here we go. Ready? 
nothing to it. There's nothing to it. It's a shot. It's a little shot. There's nothing to it. It's a shot. It's like Any a allergies? pinch. Like an allergy? Allergy to eggs? No, I love eggs. I just had two eggs today. Great. Dip the toast in it. I love it. Yolks. <laughs> well, every time I put it in the water, the egg yolk breaks. And then it gets all, but I still eat it. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. Okay, so that's it. A little shot, right? Yeah. Okay, so. All set. <laughs> 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 it doesn't hurt, honest. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Mommy! <Yeah>. Mama! Look at me! Look at me! Look at me! Look at me! Look Don't make me a rainbow shine down on the weather When everybody, everybody said we never would And just when I, I start to think that right That love has died They go making my heart beat again Heart beat again, heart beat again They go making me feel like a kid Won't you do it, do it one time She never tell. Secretly, she wanted him as well. And all of her friends stuck up their nose. They had a problem with his baggy clothes. And the little bird is easy. Oh my god, the shark jumping. And the cotton is high. Oh, your daddy. Love, let, let a gentleman see Just how much nicer game you can be I know the way you've treated other guys you've been with But luck be a lady with me A lady doesn't need her escort It isn't fair And it's not nice A lady doesn't want Alright, well anyway, let's see, next we have um, Ken, Ken, Ken Wanigan Ken Wanigan <laughs> Okay, I will Wait, what? Wait, what? Wow! When all the world is a hopeless jumble And the raindrops tumble all around Heaven opens a magic lane When all the clouds darken up the skyway There's a rainbow highway to be found Leading from your window pane to a place beyond the sun To a spot beyond the rain Somewhere over the rainbow Way up high There's a I've heard of once in a lullaby Somewhere over the rainbow Skies are blue There's a dream that you dare to dream Really do come true Someday I will
push upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you find me. Somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly. Birds fly over the rainbow. Why then, oh why? Can't I, if happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why, oh, why can't I? Jimmy Del Ponte, current Sunsetters director, Ken Lonigan, founder of the Sunsetters. Ken Lonigan, welcome. Thank you, Jimmy. It's an honor, a real honor to be here. I'm so glad to be reconnected again. Well, I'll tell you, um, as you probably know, uh, we, we, we surprised the Sunsetters at the auditions for the 2014 Sunsetters with uh, Ken coming in and, and meeting all the kids and then doing a number. And um, I, I just, I mean, how does it feel? 41 years ago, you started this group that has gotten so popular. It, of course, it died out for a while. Mayor Curta Tony brought it back. But, mm -hmm. but what were your feelings when you came in and saw these kids auditioning, doing something that you started? Well, it started with you um, on Facebook when, when you told me about the auditions and then you said, you know, I asked if I could come and you said, Yes, I started to think since that was last week. And the first sunset is the group. They're in their 50s. Mm. And, you know, and, and just the fact that it's still running, that's why I, and I meant it when I Facebooked you and I said my gratitude to you because I think it is so unique to Somerville. It's the most wonderful thing for kids. The reason it started is I was a kid that grew up in Somerville, Glen Park, and I was an athletic, and that was the only activity for kids. And I started the sunset is for kids like me. Yep. And that's how it began. And we have to, uh, you know, we have to go back and um, it was S. Lester Ralph, Mayor S. Lester Ralph mm -hmm. was the one that said, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> he didn't right? know what you, he, he, I went to Lester and I said, I want to do it. And he said, I don't know what you mean. And I said, well, I'll put it on paper. I put it on paper. And he gave me every DPW, put the horses up. Uh, he bought yeah. me the microphones. He, you know, we did, the, we were real, we only wore little vests and dungarees. And they were a smash. By the end of the summer, they had audiences. It was just an amazing thing. I remember because I was, at that time, I was in my band Shadow Facts, and we were doing, um, we were blocking the street and having bands on the streets. And the Sunsetters will always get a lot more people coming to see their shows. And uh, and that's unbelievable. But I, I'm, I'm honored to, um, that um, when Joe Curtitoni hired me, um, you know, first he says, what, what do you want to do, Jim? You know, you, you drive a truck, what do you want to do? And I said, no, I, you know, what I do is music and theater and drama. Mm -hmm. and, and he had already brought the Sunsetters back, so. Right, I went to him with John Peroni, and that's mm -hmm. how it right, happened. Right, right, right. And Joe, what had happened is that same year I directed Cabaret. I, I retired in 2004, and the, my final production was Cabaret. Mayor Curtitone came, and from the stage the last night, I just knew he was there, and I said, Please, Your Honor, please make sure that the arts don't die in Somerville. And then I went and met with him, and we brought the Sunsetters back. And not only did he bring the Sunsetters back, but Mayor Critatoni brought back Project Star. Yes. Which, um, well, actually, it's Project Star. Yes. Star. Yeah. Project Star. But back in those days, that's when it was federally funded. Oh, my God. It was federally funded, and they, there was no limit to the money that they gave us. Amazing. And the productions were huge. Unbelievable. Huge. I mean... We had we had uh, some the teachers Virginia Gordonier and uh, Edmund Mitchell and um, Roland Phillips and yeah oh my God Andy Smith Andy Smith ha Andy Smith let me do my imitation of Andy Smith <laughs> one two three four <laughs> you remember the foot 
He's still he's still alive. Yeah. And he's in uh, Arlington. I'd love to see him. Oh, what I'd love to see him. But we're talking about Ken Lonigan right now. When we just finished up auditions for the uh, 2014 mm. Sunsetters, uh, how many did you have it when you had the, the most Sunsetters? How many were there? I think the uh, Boston group that we brought into Boston, there were 42. Oh, because I've never had more than 20, 21. But what happened is each year it grew. Wow. The, what, what would happen is kids watching it wanted to be in it. And they didn't get paid back then. We pay, no. we pay the kids today because yeah. they, well, things are different. And, uh, yeah. you know, and, and I, I would like to think that we would get kids even if we didn't pay them, but I don't know. Some well, year I'd like to just try it and say, like, well, you know, we're not going to get paid this year and see who, like, bolts for the door at the auditions yeah. and see what happens. Well, like you, I was noticing tonight when you were saying, oh, you were so happy to see the boys. That was oh, yeah. From. So that what I did the first year is I called on Richie Sinesi, oh. Pat Nally. Yeah, I know them all. Daryl Goodrich and Billy Sattel, and I said, I need you guys. I brought them in, and we just went for it, and it worked. Well, look it. Thank you for coming, and um, you will come to one of the shows. Oh, I'd love to. I'm... My problem is, is that I'm only off Monday and Tuesdays. I'm the town crier in Provincetown. That's right. And Wednesday you, through Sundays. So. And you can also see Ken on YouTube. <laughs> Give us a little happy Mardi Gras to you. What do you mean? Uh, well, when you were on the... Oh, oh, when I do the... the Mardi Gras. Well, the carnival thing. Oh, do the do little the carnival thing. Well, what the town crier was the way that the news was disseminated back in the old days. So the I, I'm in a pilgrim outfit, and the basic thing is the news was always with... Hey ye, hey ye, hey ye, all is well in Provincetown. And I tell, talk to them about the, you know, the monument because the pilgrims did land in Provincetown, not Plymouth, and the Mayflower Compact. And then what I do to bring it really full course is I always say to them, now, if you were a town crier, what would you have to do? And they all say, ring the news. And down. I say, no, no. And I ring the bell, and then I bring Liza, and I go, You gotta ring them bells. You gotta ring them bells. You gotta, you know, and that works too. So, and she's coming to Provincetown this summer. She Liza is. Minnelli will awesome. be there August fourth. Yeah, Liza so. with a Z. So, and then Jimmy and I did a show together called Here's Somerville, which he wrote 1977. Right, and I was, with uh, the Somerville Players. Right. Which Ooh, that was I began too. You and I, yep, you started that too. Boy, what would we do without Ken Lonigan? I'd be home watching the baseball game, probably on unemployment. <laughs> well, I read you all the time on baseball. Oh, thank you. And read me in, read me in the Summerville News. Yeah. In the Summerville Times now. It's not the Summerville News, mm -hmm. it's the Summerville Times. And thank you, Ken Lonigan. Thank you, Jimmy. Right. Yeah, okay. the best, the best, the best. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Because I'm happy,